We started the Gus Challenge to take one of these robotic dogs from a company called Ghost Robotics, and instead of having a human operator have to be on console all of the time, we wanted the challenge of could we automate it? And we worked with the Shoe Foundation to run this challenge and had two teams of high schoolers and college uh, students with a couple of well-experienced mentors to come in and they were able to do just that. So we started off two groups with no idea of how to make the robot work. Gus, you know, he was a black box to us. We could move it around, we could set some waypoints in the app, but really we had to figure out how to make him walk, make him sit and essentially just learning how to program. In the end, what we're trying to do is patrol a perimeter, detect threats, which are humans, and uh, report those back to the user in the Android app. Because the teams are of different talents and different uh, skill sets, we try to kind of break up the challenge and put uh, people with what they're comfortable with. We allocated out pretty much what each of us wanted to do, and then we kind of assigned who does what based on that. We did a couple of meetings to figure out how this was going to work. I started prototyping some stuff out. I can write C++ pretty well. That'll probably be able to interface with the robot really well. It'll be fast and I'll just, I can do this. I'm also interested in writing code for the robots. The challenge of getting uh, people to work remotely on a dog that can only be in one place. Um, so I think that that drove a lot of our design decisions, you know, so there's, you know, the software side of it where we design the Waypoint Planner and the Android app and threat detection. And then there's the hardware side where dealing with a broken leg or the two cameras not working. Obviously there were some long nights with some uh, tensions running high closer to the end, but overall it was a pretty good team. We got along fairly well, we were joking, having fun. It was, it was a pretty good experience. One of the things that was crucial to this project is the, the help of our mentors. And so without their help and without their guidance on this project and without all the guidance we receive, we would really not be where we're at. So we took a drone and we flew it above the range and we took a picture. We implemented a ground overlay so you can see where those points are on an accurate and updated version of the map. Once you have those points planned out, and those waypoints calculated, and then that robotic dog will go and will travel through those waypoints and will feed information back to show you where he is live on the map. For now, we're just using the LiDAR for visualization and mapping. Um, we're using the thermal for threat detection. The Gus is equipped with a bunch of different cameras, but processing power and bandwidth is limited, so we're kind of trying to pick and choose on which cameras to look at, and thermal is a great way to detect humans with histogram gradients because it kind of can remove a lot of trees and things like that. And this is useful for exterior applications when you want the fleet of robotic dogs patrolling, let's say, a military base. We at the Shoe Foundation are dedicated to developing infrastructure, resources, and a fostering ecosystem for innovation to drive the next generation. This is not Austin, Texas. This is not Orlando, Florida. This is not even Huntsville, Alabama. This is Lower Hill, Florida. And if you tell anybody three years ago, say, we're gonna do this, we're gonna test the robot dog in Lower Hill, Florida. No, nobody will believe you, but, but we did. It worked outstandingly today. It worked better than I could ever dream. The robot got more distance than I thought it would. It got better GPS recognition than I thought it would. Just overall, a good day. The most satisfying thing about this, right, is, is, is normally you do things with computers and it's all inside. There's no physical manifestation and it's, it's very satisfying to see multiple pieces of software doing something in, in the real world. As a guy who focuses on really encouraging people to go into STEM careers, you all of a sudden understand that you now have this capability sitting in front of you that can excite people, that can get them really, really energized about going into a career in STEM because you can put that in front of them and you can say, this is something you can work on. The robotic dogs have been in existence for several years now and what we were trying to do is, how do we use technology to solve a problem? 
How do we use technology to keep people safe, to solve challenges that we don't want to put human beings in jeopardy? It pretty much gives you a snapshot of what the industry is going to be. You get experiences from people who've been in this field for like 30, 40 years, all to you. That's an amazing reference and it's an amazing opportunity, really. When you're writing code for fun with just yourself, the environment is kind of a, very different from a team project, and so it's it's nice to know how that works because that's kind of how it works in the real world. It's, again, have a really big bullet point on the resume to be like, yeah, okay, I know what I'm doing. It would be awesome if we could continue working on this in the future, and if we could uh, pursue the all the all the grand ideas that we have now that it's over. Well done. Well done, and I mean that because opportunity in life is not guaranteed. Opportunities in life are fleeting, which means you have to have the internal courage to step into an opportunity. We cannot be afraid of the unknown. Beyond the horizon is knowledge. Beyond the horizon is opportunity. Thank you. It is truly an honor to be a part of such a remarkable feat of autonomy, accomplished by such diversely talented participants, all focused on developing solutions for a smarter future.